Hello, Gakio. You have been gone for a long time. Welcome back. Hi, uh, well, uh, I guess this can be considered me returning, but I did post a video last week or so. No, no, n not you two. Back to for Ashraf, motherfucker! A walking over-sectionized corpse burned a fucking tree down, and now Greenpeace are on our asses. Save us, please! Welcome back. I, the game that is on the World Health Organization's list of safe contraceptives uh, that is the biggest employer of Chinese gold farmers and that is basically gonna last till the sun freezes from ever again raiding with 13 year olds on TeamSpeak. Uh, what I'm talking about is, of course, Tree Burning Simulator. No, that, that's not it. Uh, that's one of you guys on Twitter. Uh, what even is World of Warcraft? Please tell me, I'm new. It's the login, realize you have not much to do and try to do bad parkour in major cities or just run around them like a maniac while all tapping to surf the whip, the game. A place where you can craft and there is war. Are you going to make a Yairi buff now? No, it's a dead game, not worth it. Despacito. <laughs> Why? It's like a job that you pay to do and when you quit it hurts your soul. It's the place you go to escape your current life only to find yourself growing more weary of existence. <laughs> okay, thank you guys, very cool. But what is World of Warcraft exactly? Well, World of Warcraft is a game. World of Warcraft is built on top of the Warcraft universe, a series of RTS games between 1994 and 2003. The game has a pretty deep lore, which we will get into later, but most of the conflict can always be boiled down to the constant faction war between the Horde and the Alliance. Roughly every two years a new expansion is announced, but before that we just had World of Warcraft, Vanilla as it's called. The title says a lot, Vanilla World of Warcraft was the most basic the game ever was. You'd quest for two days to ding one level you felt accomplished, you'd fire lightning at a rabbit you were entertained, you'd spend three hours making a group for a dungeon you were content. You'd join a raid as a retribution paladin and you'd quit the game. As basic, straight to the point as it gets. Back then they just hammered whatever villain they'd come up with in there. A classic dragon, a floating bone man with smoker lungs. I don't even have calcium deposits. A sentient forest fire, a giant eye staring at that pimple above your upper lip. And a snake. We had battlegrounds of PvP, uh, player versus player, and some of them were long as shit. If you planned to enter Alteric Valley for example, you had to stock up on diapers and energy drinks, so some of them even lasting long enough for people to enter, leave, go to work, and come back in the same battleground 7 hours later and rightfully get executed for deserting earlier like a cowardly casual. If you actually engaged in one of those for, from beginning to end, you'd probably start to feel a burning sensation on your fat pillows. Bringing us to the first expansion, the Burning Crusade. In BC we fought through demons, monsters and mental health patients to defeat a 15,000 year old demon hunter whose biggest struggle in life was that his brother stole his crush. We got fish people acting like Saudi Arabian oil companies, a quest where you actually search in shit. No, no, sorry, uh, two of those. And we got the Dreadeye as a race, uh, crashing down on Azeroth and straight into our hearts in that spaceship, uh, joining the Alliance. What have I done? What's wrong with the Dreadeye female? What's, what's happening over here exactly? Goat slot. Uh, 18 plus profile below. Description, sexual act encounter. <laughs> it has chapters, people. I'm new, so there is not much here. Alina is thin, not too tall Dreadeye. She's pretty muscular. She has a lustful, big, firm butt and D cup size of boobs. I love being dominated. I'm sorry for the horrors, my species has brought to your beautiful Goldshire Inn, while Blood Elves brought some much needed beauty into the Horde. This is also the expansion where the absolute final boss of the final raid was basically flushed out. That's just an interesting thought. This is also where yours truly joined the game and has been playing ever since. I was 11 when I reached max level and back then I wasn't just dumb, something everyone watching my stream on Twitch has to go through. But I was also a kid, so I had no idea on how to actually play the in-game content and ended up just sitting on an island doing daily quests and battlegrounds. I was the king of slagging, much like the Lich King before he clenched his ass cheeks together and started actually doing something. Arthur's Awakens. God, such a great trailer, man. I can't even say anything dumb about this, it's just fantastic. To me, this expansion still stands as the best it has been or ever will be. I don't even care, man. I was and still is happy that the Dungeon Finder was introduced here. You can't ever convince me that this tool is worse than wasting our lifespans doing nothing Nothing but finding people in the midst of trade chat skilled and gold seller spam just to play the game. Is that even considered gameplay? Does anyone really find that fun and engaging? Okay, so, the skeleton is back, yeah, why not, and nothing is truly ever gone in fiction. And for any flat earthers playing the game, the raid Ulduar was quite the devastating blow, whereas we finally got to see whether or not Azeroth was a soggy pancake with mold on it. It wasn't. I'm sorry, uh, perhaps in future expansions they'll cater a bit more to you guys and add a quill bore as a playable race, I don't know. The end raid was pure 
pure glory. We got to kill what was basically children. Uh, nothing bad to say there. Arthas was so glorious, you couldn't go through his fight without dying. Unlike now, where we basically have been farming the fucking Lich King for seven years, just for a horse with wings that has the most brain dead joke attached to it. Why can we see Invincible? That's just the WoW community, man. That shit was the Thunder Fury Blessed Blade of the Windseeker of that expansion, I swear to god. In Cataclysm, there was a dragon. He was mad because he didn't have his dragon soul. Typical teenage tantrum erupted. He started some illegal fires, uh, held a pool party without any chaperones, and ended up drowning. Oh, what a dumbass. Oh, and in one of the raids, Deathwing was basically conducting experiments on how to make a creature that would be able to sway more people into joining his cult. Something that could emotionally manipulate the population to soften up to his dark ideologies. That's when Drake was released into this world, uh, dropping his first album. As a direct consequence of uh, Drake, emotions were flowing on Azeroth. Especially the fluffy soft pandas were so moved that their positive emotions simply expanded to the point where the negative ones were pushed out of their bodies. Literally. These emotions then manifested into powerful beings, the Shar, becoming creatures of fear, doubt, hatred, anger, and many more. With all due respect, ladies, Azeroth was on her period. But there wasn't time for binging Netflix or eating chocolate ice cream and chips, the control had to be regained, and the two main factions came to aid the emotional floofs. One man who wasn't touched by the music was Skawa, a war chief of the Horde, who, as the only person on Azeroth, still had all these negative emotions in him. You Pandaren tried to bury your hate and your anger, but such power cannot be contained. So while the other people were quite literally fighting with their emotions, he pulled a regular Threat Reich move, banning and killing anyone who was an Org or Goblin from the Horde, claiming they needed a pure faction. <laughs> are no longer part of my horde! This was when Azeroth, and especially the Horde, needed guidance the most. And who else but WoW's equivalent to Jesus, Thrall, to help guide them through their emotions. They then defeated the Shah, some trolls from 4chan, and finally Garrosh, jailing him. But something went wrong. Garrosh escaped and Warlords of Draenor happened. As if the whole Drake storyline wasn't bad enough, Bliss wanted to one-up themselves in storytelling and go back in time, and to another reality. And Garrosh was the perfect vessel to accomplish this connection. He went to Draenor to be reunited with his father, Gramas Hellscream. Perhaps he could teach Garrosh the ways of emotion. Perhaps he could lead him down a better path in life. Gramas then gave him some very strong life advice. But just as Garrosh was learning how to feel, his old war chief and friend, Thrall, came to end his life for good. Sad reacts only, please. Okay, however bad I feel this direction was, an alternate universe ended up being pretty positive for some characters, like Gramas who might have gotten better in Warlords of Draenor. <laughs> Compared to his early Warcraft stuff. What? Welcome to my nightmare! I am Iron Man! Feelings! Ward had an expansion launch so great that even 7 days after release, people were still trapped on flight paths to their main base for hours on end and were disconnected when just getting close to a rare mob before trusting those servers that hand my personal information to Mark Zuckerberg. But that's not all, uh, a selfie camera. And as a major feature of this grand expansion was to fuse Farming Simulator 2015 with uh, Sims 4. But the magic is, they made both worse. And you had the option to physically harass your peons, uh, which, although a positive, didn't save the mechanic from the wrath of the forums. The law of this expansion doesn't ever need to be explained. Ever. As a whole, what was a clever trick to lower expectations for the next expansion, Legion. In Legion, the Alliance got a new king, a king that, at worst, is seen by the community as sexually ambiguous, and at best a perfect victim of fanfiction. But we only got him because our mighty demigod king got downed by a few demon guards. Oh well. Vol'jin, the new war chief. Yeah, they are replaced every second expansion or so. Also gets fatally hit in the same battle as Varian, and through some heavy troll mojo, weed, he chooses Sylvanas Windrunner as the next war chief, a literal dead elf who's known as the leader of the Forsaken and for her appearances on Rule 34. So the Burning Legion is attacking in this expansion, that's why all these things happen. The Legion is basically an interdimensional army of demons and shit out to end all life in the universe. This expansion was probably more important to the overall story than all the others combined. We went to other planets, especially the Legion's homeworld of Argus, also the home planet of the best race in WoW. We learned that there's a titan, basically a god, inside of it, and the leader of the Legions are Garrus. Resting place. 
face of the dark titan Sardress. Also a titan. Yeah, if you're new to this, uh, it's complicated. Is stopped and imprisoned by the horny night owl from the Burning Crusade, but not before penetrating the planet with his sword. Which strangely enough leads into the next and current chapter, Battle for Azeroth. Now, Battle for Azeroth is brand new. There's not much to say about it other than there's a faction war with a hint of underlying bigger issues and a lot of burned elf. Like so much that the amount of magical ash left after the fire would be enough to satisfy the needs of the nightborn junkies for years. And uh, in my opinion the horde is being shown in a very unfavorable light in this expansion. It's weird why it's always them there's something majorly wrong with. I would like to see Blizzard perhaps make both factions kinda grey instead of more black and white as it is now. That's just my hot take of the day though, I don't hate me for it cause uh, people are so zealous about the fictional stories man, their passion sometimes reminds me of the amount of love Louis CK has for spanking his monkey. Um, so uh, that was all the expansions covered, uh, quite nicely I'd say. Pretty good coverage, pretty decent storytelling. I got the most important shit mentioned, no problems there. Now the community can be pretty feisty on, especially patch day, and basically whenever someone hasn't won a few arenas in a row. These mountains of text about law disagreements and nerf feral druids are truly the battlefields of today, uh, a regular shit show. Obviously. But although I may be naive, I do still think that most people playing this game are kind and friendly. But that's just me. So I uh, I just wish, uh, in, in all the years I've made WoW content, I felt how passionate people were for it and how much they delved into the game. Often a bit too much, because unfortunately there's a lot of people out there, regardless of fandom, uh, that are just straight up assholes. If there's one thing I wish for WoW, is for the community to have a bit more constructive and friendly discourse overall. Oh well, that's all I got for ya. Uh, in South is a fish, uh, have a good one. Follow my Twitch for weekly streams. See ya.